everybody, you're listening to So Many Sequels. I'm Josh. I'm Andrew. I'm Garrett. And I'm David. And we're all here today on this wonderful day that you're listening to this show, whatever day that may be, to talk about a uh, childhood favorite and a timeless classic toy story. Uh, but before that, I mean, we're jumping into a new, a new series. I feel like it's a good time to just kind of like catch up on a sta- uh, the state of the podcast people. All right. Oh, how's everybody doing? We never talk about that kind of stuff. Oh yeah, we never really talk about ourselves. We all do. Oh, who man. we are? Who you. are you? I've got. I've just got so many things right. going on right now. You know, My I just hit the lottery, so that's pretty good. <laughs> I'm, uh, Would anyone who's not lying like to speak? Making millions of dollars, millions of anyone dollars. Anyone at all? I almost finished with Game of Thrones. I oh, you will. Well, we will be finished by the time this airs. Oh, I will be finished drops. by the time this airs. So, uh, yeah. So, luckily, I won't. Uh, you can't spoil it for me. That's true. Not at this point. No. That's exciting. No, yeah, I've, uh, I decided to try to start. I decided I never watched it, never had it spoiled for me, so I decided to give it a shot. That's and uh, I'm, I've got six episodes to go. Has anybody seen any of the big summer movies yet? What are, what, can, what qualifies as the big summer movies? Well, I mean, so I guess that's subjective because, like, I don't know. Some, some, of, the, some of these the big Avengers. summer movies have flopped. Yeah, well, flopped in critical terms, yeah. No, I'm talking about box office, even. Oh, that's true. Right. Yeah, I'll tell you this. X Men Dark Phoenix eighty three percent drop this Friday from last Friday. That That's a monumental drop yeah. in terms of cash. It's kind flow. of a kind of a bummer summer so far. Uh, I have not seen any of the what I guess you could consider the big ones. Not seen X Men Dark Phoenix. Not seen Men in Black. Uh, that just got released though. It did just come out. Yeah. Um, at the time of this recording. At the time. Yeah, of this you're, recording. You're, you're, you're dating us now. I did see Avengers Endgame. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that was. It did not. It was not as exciting as I hoped it would be. Well, <laughs> I no, we're very boring people. That's why we do this podcast. I yeah. Speak for yourself, though. How about that? <laughs> fell asleep right after breakfast this morning. That sounds about right. Oh, that's a nuts. Okay. Well, <laughs> what time were you up? I guess this every. Morning? Who me? No, Andrew. Yeah? What time did you wake up today? I actually woke up at like seven thirty. Wow, that was a mistake. Yeah. Yeah. Because and then you fell asleep at what eight thirty? Uh, yeah, pretty, after breakfast, pretty close. Like they, I mean, they were they were at my apartment till like. Two thirty. Two thirty in the morning. And then I went to and I took a shower and I went immediately to bed and then cried. I did. And then mm-hmm. like I got up at seven thirty and I'm like, well, I guess I'm done. No. Okay. <laughs> well, let's talk about let's just, let's talk about Toy Story. Don't <laughs> <laughs> you? you Turns out we're all, in, all that out now. Well, not very interesting people. Yeah. Um, Toy Story came out in 1995. This is Pixar's first ever film. It's also the first uh, ever computer gener- computer animated film, like gener- I don't know what I'm talking about. CG. You know what I'm saying. See, it's the first CG cartoon. Yeah, which is cool. Um, there's a lot of backstory into the production of Toy Story, so I'm sure we'll find a way to talk about that here and there. It's really fascinating, being that it's the birth of Pixar and the birth of um, what is essentially now the standard way to make a. A cartoon. Mm-hmm. You don't ever get 2D animation anymore, which is kind of a shame in some ways. Yeah, mostly only on... Uh, and most of the time now when you even see 2D animation, it's actually computer-generated animation yeah. anyway. It's true. Yeah. Even yeah. when, no even one, when no it's made to look anymore. like 2D. Except here. Well, I was going to say except for anime, but anime does computer stuff. Yeah, yeah. What, were you, what are you talking about? It's a blend. <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what I'm talking so, about. So, Toy I'm Story... <laughs> Was, Toy Story was released November 22nd, 1995, directed by John Lasseter, starring Tom Hanks, Tim Allen, and an assortment of uh, great uh, voice actors from Don Rickles to Jim Varney, John Ratzenberger, who becomes a Pixar mainstay, uh, Andy Potts, Arlie Ermey, a lot of great. Wallace Shawn. A lot of great cast yeah. in, in here. Um, let's Tom start Hanks. with... Uh, what? <laughs> I said, who's Tom Hanks? Yeah. Why do, you, why, do you, why do you do the things you do? Because I like anarchy. <laughs> you're a regular, you're a regular Sid, aren't you? That's I what sure they've am. always told me about Andrew. He's a real anarchist. Yeah, I mean, that's how most people sum it up. Who would say about Andrew? Um, you know, he's a little anarchy. Does anyone want to throw out their one word to describe this movie? Toy Story. Groundbreaking. Whoa. Heavy hitter. I'll say imaginative. Mm. Legend. Mm. Wait for it. Nope. Dairy. <laughs> <laughs> Wait for it. Um, I'll say nostalgic. Okay. All right. 
so everybody knows Toy Story. I'm not going to go through the plot like we normally do. I want to start out talking about Toy Story. I can't confirm that it's the first movie I saw in theaters, but I think it was. And oh, I have yeah. a very, I have a very early memory of watching Toy Story. It's the first movie I can remember watching. And I want to talk about that a little bit, because I'm sure everyone here has similar experiences, except for Andrew, who was in college when it came out. Yeah. Fuck. Um, Andrew's first movie in a theater was uh, Fly Me to the Moon, I think. <laughs> I, have a, I have a very specific memory, Toy Story related moon. memory, where I was in kindergarten. I, I, I have like one memory, of, strong memory of kindergarten, and right. it's this. I was in kindergarten, so I'm five years old. And I was wearing a, a Buzz Lightyear t-shirt. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I, I want to say it was blue and it had Buzz Lightyear like flying, doing his flying thing. And this kid came up to me and he went, to infinity and beyond! And because I'm a weird kid, uh-huh. uh, it embarrassed me because he made a, I felt like he was making a <laughs> mockery of me. <laughs> You're making fun of you. And it uh, put a negative feeling on me. That sits there in my heart to this day. Yeah, that, I was gonna say that's lasted all the way yeah, through. Yeah, it's my one memory from kindergarten. To your late twenties. Who's who's honestly <laughs> just like joining my enthusiasm for Toy yes. Story, but because he made a show, I'm like, oh, you're making fun of me, aren't you? <laughs> I have a similar asshole. I have a yeah. similar experience. <laughs> I don't like what you're I, saying. Um, I also believe that Toy Story was the first film I I saw in a theater that I remember sitting in a theater. My my parents may have taken me to one earlier in 95 or 94 but i just don't remember like uh pocahontas came out earlier that year i may have seen that in theaters but i don't remember it the first one i remember sitting there and looking at the in, and seeing these things was yeah, i remember it being big i also had a playground-esque fight over toy story because i remember seeing it and i came to school the next week and this kid i'll name drop him right here his name was kyle cornelius wow kyle you're on notice yes <laughs> we were talking about how great toy story was who was buzz who was woody if we were all people you know right. like if we were the characters right sure. who wanted to be rex and uh he I goes i love the part at the end when he goes rockets away and i ever said to him no he says rockets explode and he goes no it's rockets away and i go no you're thinking of power rangers you doofus it's rockets explode and we got into the big fight rockets and of course explode. i ended up in the corner which is most of my memories of kindergarten is just you ended in up cor- in the corner oh i was a bad when he's out here man. speaking lies that i was is, a bad kid that is really surprising so let It'll, me get this it straight. will not surprise you josh that i take things too far your foundational memory of of uh kindergarten and toy story is being taught the example that <laughs> lying goes unpunished. I don't know if he's lying. I think that he's just boy an, lied! I think he's just an idiot. He's just a, well, he could be both. I don't like people who don't pay attention to movies. All right? You're in there five years old taking notes. I am. I'm taking... I'm listening. I quote back the movies. Like, I can... I, as the movie was playing in my house rewatching it this week, I was, like, accidentally quoting the whole movie to myself. Yeah, it happens. It was rough. What about you, Gary? Do you yeah, remember... You too. What, what are you your earliest about? memories of this? Don't have any. I don't remember things like Who that. Who are you? I don't remember things like that. I, I never feel like have, you didn't do... exist before 15. No, probably not. I don't remember things like that. Yeah, I feel like what you just... What was your childhood? I don't know. I'm pretty I good. don't remember things like that. <laughs> did you get hit in the head? Uh, maybe. I don't remember. Somebody didn't write Garrett's backstory. Like, whoever's mm. whoever's yeah. actual, like, projection this is, whoever's, whoever the real person here is, didn't write a backstory for you. Listen, I was five. I don't know. You yeah. just showed up when we were twenty one. Yeah. I wanna I wanna I wanna go in. Well this. then what is your <laughs> I can't what, you can go into it as deep as you want. I don't think, have answers. Then you gotta do this for us. What is your earliest memory of the story? What's oh. your earliest memory? I don't know. <laughs> What's your okay, what was the first movie you saw in I don't know? I don't remember things like that. Oh man. I wanna I want you to know this is rare. <laughs> I don't remember. The I mean, I get maybe I not remember it in a theater, yeah. but it's 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 not uh, it's not necessarily something everybody thinks about. Yeah. But uh, what's your earliest memory of Toy Story? I don't know. You were getting a toy. Watching it a couple days ago. You were getting a Woody toy. I mean, I've always loved Toy Story, but like it's just always been there that I don't remember the first thing. Like I don't. But he's just asking like your earliest. I don't. I don't have one. It has did to you be get a first. A, did you get? A, did you get like a buzz and? It's just toy? always been a part of me. It's like trying to remember, like I don't know, preschool days. I don't remember anything like that. I, I just do. know it's always been there. I remember preschool. One time, a lunchable made me sick. <laughs> no, 
And I didn't eat Lunchables again for a long time. It was the turkey one with the little turkey slices. Oh, that's gross. Exactly. I that's remember gross. playing. Uh, I remember playing PE in like kindergarten. See, we all have pre- preschool and kindergarten memories. I don't remember. Where's really. yours? None. We were like playing dodgeball and stuff. I remember that. I cried in the first day of preschool. Well, that's because they were still swatting kids. <laughs> they actually were. <laughs> of course they were. Well, okay. So, what, so Andrew, what, what, do you have a Toy Story memory? I. Okay. Since Garrett apparently got Men in Black wiped at some point. In the <laughs> <laughs> so I have two. St- I have two memories, and one pertaining to Toy Story, another pertaining to Pixar. My f- my earliest memory of Toy Story was <laughs> when I went to go see. Uh, when I went to go see Toy Story the weekend it came out and I went with my grandpa Uh and I remember thinking your grandpa was alive when you were 75 that's impressive (laughs) big bag of shit (laughs) it's right over here Max has been filling Full bag of shh <laughs> with your name on it. (laughs) Did you go see it Thanksgiving weekend? I did go see it Thanksgiving weekend and my grandpa my grandpa took me and I remember coming home, I'm like, man, I really love that movie. I want to go see it again. And I never saw it in the theaters again. But when it came out on video, I think, I don't know when it came out on video, but I know we, I immediately got it after that. And I wore that videotape out. Yeah. yeah uh, this, was a way, this was a tape wearing around her. <clears throat> but uh, <laughs> my earliest, the first movie I ever saw in the theater was Rescuers Down Under. Oh, which I yeah. later found out. That Pixar had a hand in digitally animating that. That's true. Mm. That's what true. is that? 89? 80, somewhere. Yeah, like that. I was literally not born. <laughs> yeah, you did. You did not. Exi- none of you. Exi- well, I did. You do. You were like what? Eight? Yeah, but you don't remember anything. So you no, did I don't you? remember anything. I remember Rescuers Down Under. Um. Okay, well, that's, I mean, good. Well, uh, three out of four have Toy Story memories. <laughs> it is amazing, though. For me, Toy Story is just a lifestyle. I don't remember it. It's I don't have a memory of it. It's just always been there. Okay. Mm, I don't buy it. I don't buy it. Well, So, Toy Story tells the story of Woody and Buzz and their adventures amongst other toys and yada, yada, yada. Um, we've watched this movie so many times over the years. Do you have? Does anyone have a one favorite scene, or oh, yes. or do you oh. like have a different favorite scene every time you watch it? Yeah, I don't know. That's toughy. It is a toughy because you're. You, I'm, I'm watching the movie and I go, "That's my favorite scene." Okay, no, that's is, my favorite yeah. scene. There is a scene that is, I think, always been my favorite, and then, like you said, like I'll develop new favorites over time as I kind of like appreciate different things. Uh-huh. But the tea party scene. With Buzz oh, as Mrs. Yeah. Nesbitt uh-huh. is undoubtedly my favorite. Just his whole demeanor, like he's been uh, uh, emotionally crushed by the realization that he is in fact a toy, and um, the hat and his, you know, like uh, Sid's sister giving him tea, and then his whole speech about sucking down Darjeeling with <laughs> Marie Antoinette and her little sister. <laughs> you know, and then <laughs> and then doing the whole thing. You see the hat. Mrs. Nesbet and and slaps him with his own hand. It's just a great little moment. I, I, you're right. I was, I was uh, being a little depressed <laughs> and walks away. <laughs> I just love the whole sequence. <laughs> Everything about that is funny to me, and that, it was as a kid. Although I didn't get the Marie Antoinette reference as a child. <laughs> No, there are many a times watching these kid movies that I go back and I go, I don't know why that's funny when I was a kid. <laughs> but I laughed because I knew I was supposed to laugh. Yeah. But I don't know why I laughed. It's funny as a kid because he's dressed like a girl. Well, that's true. I mean, yeah, you just laugh at the bass level and you're not really listening. Very like, you're listening to what they say. And he's being silly and using a weird voice. Yeah. No, Nesbitt's always great. I always enjoy um, the howdy, howdy, howdy. Oh, yeah. Um, when the shark pops out wearing Woody's head and he goes, Hi, I'm Woody. Howdy, howdy, howdy. howdy. <laughs> That's always funny. That's always great. Um, I also always enjoy... Uh, where's the other part? I had... Uh, go ahead. It, I, it slipped my brain and yeah. I have to go back to my notes. Favorite scene while he goes searching? <laughs> uh, my favorite scene... I think my favorite scene was whenever he was... Uh, whenever Woody was in Sid's house... And he was talking to the other toys in Andy's house. Mm-hmm. And they were just like, hey, look, it's Buzz. And he's just like, I got Buzz right down here. And, well, where is he? And he's like, oh, Buzz, will you give me a hand? Mm-hmm. You know, I, I love that pun. It's a great pun. And then he had the arm. And um, honestly, my favorite scene, I think my favorite scene was when the, 
was when we see the cannibal toys come out mm-hmm. and they rescue they rescue Buzz. Yeah, that's a cool mm-hmm. scene. That's yeah. that. I think that that really has to be my favorite scene in that. And then when they when they fix Buzz, when they fix Buzz, I'm like, oh, that's an interesting turn. Yeah, yeah it's a good dynamic so showing so that um, they are not the stereotype they're that not evil. The toys have always thought they were. That just because they're Sid's toys doesn't make them evil like Sid <clears throat> is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like that too. I I think I will always love Buzz and Woody's fight under the car at at, at uh, Pizza that was Planet funny. Mm-hmm. with the uh, you are a toy. You are a you sad stranger. Are a child's yeah. plaything. <laughs> I like it when You're they're beating up on each other. Yeah, yeah. Buzz, it's a great. Buzz, buzz, it's like to me, it's iconic. Yeah, uh, it, it highlights the. It perfectly highlights the dynamic of Tom Hanks and Tim Allen. Yeah. Just they're they're different. I just the way that those two characters, as voiced by the actors, sort of respond to this the situation, mm-hmm. and uh, I think accentuates their strengths. I don't yeah. know. Just it, something it, about it, it really it, works. It's like the quintessential Buzz and Woody scene for that reason. Mm-hmm. I also like when he he's hitting him, <laughs> and he goes buzz buzz buzz, buzz, buzz like you're the rescue. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. it's just a good little moment. There were a couple of moments go walking through or going through this this time that I caught that I had never caught. So I really enjoyed when they ask Buzz where he's from or whatever and he goes through this whole thing about his sector and and lord zerg and and whatever and they break and they go i'm from play school and <laughs> I'm Rex mattel. goes i'm mattel well, and I'm then actually from mattel then the uh, <laughs> other part where well, they talk about woody and he's kind of upset about all the gadgets and whatnot and they ask what's wrong with him and potato said ahead says uh, he's got laser envy I yeah, that was pretty oh, funny. Yeah. And then they also made a light beer joke, which I was I had never caught before in my life. Light really? beer. Woody ca- calls him Buzz Lightbeer, and I was like, "Hey, that's one for the adults. Good for them." And that made me laugh this time. What about you, Josh? You have a favorite moment or scene that stands out? Well, I told you. Oh, did you? <laughs> what did you say? I but, said the scene under the car. Oh, although I'm I have sorry. a lot, and I feel like we're just going to uh, keep going through these moments. I'm sorry. So I wanted to try to like. Um, this movie's really quotable. Yeah. We've already quoted a lot of it. Does anyone have... What are, what are some of your favorite quotes or things you find yourself saying? Mine, that is the the weird one that I that always comes to my mind, is Potato Heads. What are you looking at, you hockey puck? Yeah. And moves over and it's hockey puck. I just like to say that. Yeah. It's, it's, I always it's, have. I, I, I tried to try to figure out as a kid if that was like a thing people actually called people. Yeah. I wasn't sure if hockey puck was an actual insult. I never heard anybody called a hockey puck prior to that. Very confused. I did not did not understand what a Picasso was. So the whole <laughs> that whole sequence where he goes, "I'm Picasso," I don't get it. That no, whole bit. Swine. I did not understand as a kid. Was utterly confused. I spent like the, the next like four years trying to figure out what Picasso, what a Picasso means. Yeah, and then you know eventually you end these sort of things. I also to this day. The uh, the only reason I know how batteries work is because of Woody going plus is positive minus is negative. <laughs> I think about I've that always lot. known how batteries work. I think since about I was that five a lot for that when I'm putting in batteries. Yep, it's for the me, first thing that comes to mind. For, oh yeah, plus is positive minus is negative. For me, a regular I would say semi daily quote that I will end up saying is whenever anybody asks me to do something and it's not something that I'm going to get done, <laughs> I will yell not today. <laughs> Just. Which Buzz yells before the rocket explodes. I just, I don't know why, but that's just become my go-to response for, I'm not doing that. Not mm-hmm. today. Next. Um, every time I, every time I trip on something and I catch myself, I just say that I'm falling with style. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good one. Which is damn near daily. You do <laughs> fall a lot. You are you a, lot. a lot. You're a bit clumsy. A little bit, yeah. but I'll take it. You have any famous quotes to stand out? I don't necessarily. Howdy, 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 and hockey puck are two that I use. But uh, I usually just like to quote, "You got a friend of me." When when the ability or when the time comes, mm-hmm. uh, not so much like anything specific from the movie, but I really try to throw out "You got a friend of me" at least in some kind of initiative. And it may not be those specific wordings. Like sometimes I try to word it in a different way, but to the tune of "You got a friend of me." So. That's that's for me one of the most memorable parts of this whole movie is that particular song, and that usually works its way into my conversations from time to time. Oh, one more! I do whenever I have like a handful of change or dollars, I do go money, money, money. <laughs> <laughs> I like that, <laughs> money, money, money. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's just so many. 
it's an it's like an impossibly quotable movie. Oh yeah. And I don't really know if it is actually a quotable movie or know, it's kind of, if it has been burned into our brains there are, from being watched so much. There are a lot of great quotes that are just regular quotes. And then there's like a lot of the things that are just just pieces of dialogue that for whatever reason just lodged in our memories. You know? Uh, things like, you know, Rex, you know, like, oh, but he's cool. That, that, all that stuff. <laughs> like, it's a little light, light bulb that blinks, you know, these like little things that are, this could be like throwaway lines get make, become quotable anyway, just because you watch it so much. But there are, there are the obvious ones. You are a toy, uh, to infinity and beyond, um, those kind of things that just slow, like our work were written to be quotable, written to be put on boxes, you know, and lunch boxes and stuff. You know, you're my favorite deputy. These types of things. Boy, am I glad to see you. There's a snake in my boot, all yeah. that fun stuff. All the good mm-hmm. ones. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm a little afraid of what the answer to this might be from some of you. Did, when you were kids, did, you, did any of you know a Sid or were you Sid? I knew a kid like Sid. Um, not that he was necessarily terrible. I just remember I, would, I went over to his house and I saw G.I. Joes with nails through their heads. And I wasn't sure uh, which came first, Sid or him. <laughs> you know, like what would like was he inspired to do that by Sid, or was it like are these his older brother's toys? But I do remember seeing that and being like, oh my gosh, that's like what Sid does. His GI Joes is put like nails to their heads. You see those ones come out of the ground in the movie. But I never blew up any toys or purposely broke any of my toys. No, I don't think I did either. The closest I ever got, and this was long time ago, but or not long time from this movie. Uh, when we were all in college and we were going up to, I don't remember, we were near Owasso, I think, and there's a dark section of road, and all of a the sudden there were just, like, doll heads nailed to trees, and yeah. that's when I turned around and left. That was the scary, <laughs> like, the scariest thing I've ever seen. That was scary, Gary. I didn't like it, and I don't like it to this day, and I, I, I have that memory, and I don't want it, but that's, I think, the closest. But it, that, I assume, was... I don't think that was a kid. I think it was just something that people did. I don't know. Yeah. It was a bad time. Somebody trying to scare people. Yeah. You know, it makes it worse if it's not a kid. I know. Yeah. They, grown, that whole grown situation grown was scary, you, you and I didn't like it. I did not like it. <laughs> Andrew? Well, you, you were a Sid, for sure. Uh, I mean, no. you're both bald. <laughs> <laughs> you both wear black a lot. <laughs> Wait a minute. Sid wasn't bald. He had hair. You were knockoff mm, buzz cut. Barely. Barely had any hair. Yeah, but... No, I wasn't really a Sid. I, I mean, I, I only blew up like twenty toys. That's not a lot. Oh, no, it was only ten. Pulling like, heads off Barbies? <clears throat> no, I didn't even do that. I just like, uh, I, yeah, I, I play. I played with toys. I don't. I really don't know any Sids either. I mean, I, uh, no, I, I don't. I don't know. I don't. I don't think so. Okay. So. <sighs> I guess this would be a way to to try to see if maybe I could pull some Sid out of us. Well, at least, David and I are the only ones with younger siblings. Mm-hmm. You two were the younger siblings. Yes. David, did you ever uh, steal any of your little brother's toys and, like, break them? Uh, break them? <laughs> like, like Sid does to uh, Emily? No, break them, no. I mean, I would take their toys yeah. if they were, like, if they served my playing purposes. Sure. Uh, my youngest brother, when I was, like, 12 or 13... He was about four, and these toys had come out called, uh, uh, what were they called? Rescue Heroes? Sounds right. And they were they were a toy designed to be collectible. Like, they had billions of these rescue rangers. They were based on firemen and, and ambulance drivers, and they had, like, basically an ever-expanding universe of crazy rescue heroes. And he liked them just because he wanted to, like, play with them in a very simple way. But I was like, no, this is some, I can do some long-term storytelling with all this. And so I'm, like, <laughs> grabbing them up, you know? They're interacting with my Spider-Man and Batman's, my Star Trek toys and all that. Like it was, uh, so I was very interested in that. So he would like come, he would like come wandering in my room and go like, "Dude, took my Rescue Rangers," and I'd be like, "No, I didn't." And here, just take them, get out of here. I don't remember breaking any of them. Uh, I did kick my brother, my little brother's uh, like soccer ball over a fence one time. That was mean. Rude. That was a ball. So, <laughs> so I have a Sid-ish type story. But it involves my older sister, and I'm going to apologize for telling this story because she's going to hate me. <laughs> but it's so funny. I think in our older years, she's come to appreciate the humor in the story. I had a temper when I was a kid. No. Yeah. Get out. I did. 
I'm glad you've grown out of that. Yeah. Yeah. So one day, it was summertime, I think, and my sister and I got into like a little sibling fight, whatever. So I threw a bouncy ball at her. And she picked it up and took it in her room and said, it's mine now, or whatever kids say at the time. So I went into my room and I had, I don't know why, I don't know how, I can't answer this question, but I feel like there's going to be a question. I had real handcuffs. Not the kind with like the quick release at the bottom, they were real metal handcuffs. Had a key and everything. Yep. So I went into my sister's room and I knocked on the door and I was trying to be real nice and I had these handcuffs behind my back. And I said, can I have my ball back? And that so, you threw at her. Yes, that I threw at her. And she gave it back to me. And I handcuffed her to her own bedpost. <laughs> it was so fast. I don't know how I did it. But she reached out to give me the ball. And I snapped that handcuff on her. And I shoved her hand to her bedpost, which had like a ball at the top. And I handcuffed it underneath the ball. Okay. Now, as bad as that sounds, it gets worse. Because for several hours, I could not find the key. Oh, no. I couldn't find the key. She called my mom at work and was like, Garrett has handcuffed me to my bed. My mom starts laughing because it's so ridiculous. So I eventually find the key. I was using the key as a bookmark in a Will Smith biography. <laughs> Headphones are off. Yep. <laughs> That was the day that I handcuffed my sister to her own bed. And so you were, what, 21, 24 when this happened? <laughs> I wish I could remember how old I was. I, I don't remember how old I was, but I was old enough to know better. Josh, you have access to Google over there. Find out when the earliest Will Smith biography <laughs> might have been written. I remember that I bought the biography at a Scholastics book fair, that so there's sense. a chance that I was in elementary school. At this time. has sparked a memory in me with toys and maybe mistreating them. It's not necessarily a mistreating, I think, situation. It's just a why. Why would you do that? Uh, I was maybe seven, maybe eight. I had a lot of toys. That whole room basically dedicated to toys. It was just me and my youngest, my second young, my, my, my middle brother at this point. So we had a whole third bedroom that was basically just a playroom. It was great. Oh, man, we, it was the time of our lives. We decided that our Power Rangers needed a command center. We didn't have the command center you could go buy at Toys R Us. So we tried to make our own by just piling every toy we had <laughs> on top of them. We had a lot, so we piled every toy we had in the middle of the room, and it almost reached the ceiling. <laughs> and my dad walks in and goes, what have you done? <laughs> Look at this. And we were like, it's, it's a command center. And he was like, it's a pile of junk. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we were like, oh... And he was like, "You have to clean this up now." And like, so from so then we had to figure out how we were gonna take it all all back, all back apart. We had very meticulously planned out <laughs> its structure up to the roof. I mean, every toy we had, the rest of the room was vacant <laughs> around the sides. It was a silly event. Was it by chance this Will Smith biography? Um, I don't think it was. It I remember it had a red cover. Okay, so. Probably pre two thousand. Oh yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, it was pre two thousand. Okay, I just can't believe you remember that, but you can't remember anything about the computer story. <laughs> any other? Do we have any other Toy Stories? Um. Oh goodness! So this this will. Do, or do you have one, Andrew? No, I'm still. Th I'm still thinking. I don't think I have any. This might lead into the next question, Toy Story question I was going to ask before we kind of get more into the back to the specifics of the film a little bit. Um, when I was a kid, there was a, a neighbor who had a toy that I was immensely jealous of. And I always wanted it and I never got it. Moon shoes. <laughs> <laughs> no. <clears throat> he had, anybody watch Power Rangers in space? No. Yeah, I did. Okay, so this guy, well you were too old. Yeah, they were talking like season was. 7, season 8 of Power Rangers at this I, point. I stopped watching them after like season 4. Power Rangers <laughs> in space. They uh, flew on that big blue spaceship. Yeah. His yeah. neighbor kid had the spaceship. Oh, man. And I wanted it so bad. And so I always wanted to play with him and have him bring out the spaceship and we play Power Rangers. And that's my uh, 
That's my toy jealousy story because I never had that toy. Yeah. Um, There's always that that that. Uh, there was another holy another grail of toys. Power Rangers related one was the. Uh, uh, back when Tommy turned into the the, the White Ranger, mm-hmm. and he had the Falcon Zord, mm-hmm. I wanted that Falcon. Oh yeah. And I remember asking for it for Christmas, mm-hmm. and Santa didn't bring it to me, and I was so angry at Santa. Yeah, that's some that's a bust. <laughs> I never right there. I, I never did forgive him for that. That's a Christmas I think I eventually rule. ended up getting it uh, sometime later, but Santa did me dirty that. Year. Did you have the rest of them to make the the Megazord? At one point I did. Ooh, at one point. That's cool. Yeah. And so I was going to lead into that with, what were some of your favorite toys? Were there any oh. toys? Like, Andy had Woody, and then he had Buzz. What was your equivalent of Woody and Buzz, if you had one? Uh, there was there was three that I can remember. And it was anything anything that was micro machines related mm-hmm. I still have some of my mm-hmm. I still have some of my Star Wars micro machines you mean it wasn't a raggedy Andy doll no uh-uh. I did it wasn't have... that uh, the game where you have like a hoop and a stick and you gotta try to keep the hoop up like they played in <laughs> the 1920s the or <laughs> I feel like was that was it, the uh, first game was it, was it ball in a cup <laughs> you, a you try to get the ball in the cup nah it's Pong Pong that's a good toy um, it's technically a video game that uh, let's see, micro machines. Anything that was, re- anything that was Star Wars Lego related. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, I love Star oh, Wars. I Lego. forgot about my Lego period. Yeah, yeah, Legos is a big man, piece of it. Man, Legos are just they're they're a piece of my history, and I love them forever. Uh, the one toy that got a lot of play when I was a child was I got this for my seventh birthday. It was the, it was from the Batman animated series, the Batmobile. Mm. And, oh, and it had it like you could put like a regular Bruce Wayne, and then like you do something and it converts into the Batmobile, and all of a sudden like the action figure turns over and there's another Batman action figure, Whoa. and I had that. Also, I did have whenever Batman and Robin first came out. There um, he is. Yeah, no, not Batman and Robin. Batman Forever. Mm-hmm. They had like a dual set of. The Batman and Robin action figures. All right, and I had those a lot, and I played with those things. A yeah, lot. I had a lot of Batman uh, Forever based merchandise. I remember there was like a Riddler oh, yeah. who had like a TV in his chest. Yeah, yeah, and, and that. See, I also had the Riddler. I had the uh, I, that was the first year I collected all of them. I had Batman and Robin. I had the Riddler, and I had Two Face. Yeah, and I think Two Face is one of my is one of my favorite ones. Also, I had the Super Mario, like when the movie the Super Mario Brothers came out. Listen, we don't I need had, your whole damn toy box. I know, but now, like, <laughs> I asked for your favorite toy. Yeah, he's you always said, favorite you toys. said you've said gotten three. down to being the Super Mario Brothers movie. He yes. said three, and then you went on to list nine. Yeah, <laughs> and not only that, he said all three were micro machines related. <laughs> but like, but no, I, I, I will say like micro machines and Legos. I I love those things. Okay, thank you. Next, all right, Garrett. <laughs> I'm sorry. I too had a lot of Power Rangers you toys, mean, thank you and a saying. lot of the thank Power Rangers <laughs> toys that are coming back now are the ones that I had, and I'm really frustrated that I don't still have them. So the ones that I remember the most were the action figures of the Power Rangers, and their heads would spin, so you would have them like in their suits without their masks on, and then you like squeeze their legs or whatever, and their head flipped. And it would be oh, morphin yes. time. Oh, so I had the complete set of those. Absolutely. Yeah, I I did end up getting like I had the Saba sword from um, Tommy. I also had the full collection of the Zords, and I remember Santa brought me those, and Santa did not prepare ahead of time and spent a very long. He left me a letter. And he was like, he spent a very long time putting all those damn stickers on those swords because they, the elves didn't do it. Mm-hmm. So he was like, I did it to have, so you could have a good Christmas. But Santa was at my house a very long time putting those stickers on all of those swords so I would have it in the morning. And I had like the kid. I feel like sounds I had like Santa kid. was frustrated and wanted some uh, <laughs> validation. They now. did. They, <laughs> Santa did get the validation. But I also had the command center with uh, Zordon in the oh, back, voice. and you could flip it, and and so I had a very extensive Power Ranger collection. And it had the, like the little microphone, and you could be Zordon. You can go Rangers. I believe that. Thing. I believe that. It was <sighs> I had a friend who had that, and I hated him. Yep, I had many a Power Rangers toys. With, with the Power Rangers, with the flip, with the flip, uh, the flip belt. Yep. Did you note that their like arms and legs were really easy to get popped off? 
I tried not to do that, so no. Well, I just, they, they're just natural wear and tear. I would play with them and make them fight and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're just, one day, just arm <laughs> off. Because they were just little hinges. Yeah, yeah They yeah. weren't, like, uh, bolted in or anything. They were just, like, little hinges where their arms were. Anyway. Josh? Um, did I not say mine? No. No, I, oh, I, know, I told the, they this. told my toy jealousy stories. Um, so... I'm trying. I was trying to be less boring because we've all said Power Rangers are Batman <laughs> related things, but I did have a, a Batman Forever Batcave set Ooh. that was like yay tall, and it had a bridge that connected to like another little Batcave island. So I played with that a lot, and um, I also remember I really liked. Um, I had a. This would have been, I guess, one of the last toys that I really played with before I started to get too old. When the Spider-Man movie came out, I had a Spider-Man action figure. So I was about 11 or 12, and I, I played with that Spider-Man action figure a lot, swinging, web slinging all over yeah. the place. I uh, I also so uh, I also had a Spider-Man. Yeah. This was pre the Spider-Man movie though. This was like early 90s. I've actually found a photo of it, and I this was my interpretation of what Spider-Man looked like for years. It was a really cool Spider-Man toy. Oh. And he had a red suit and black suit. As opposed to red and blue. I had this thing for years. It added all the opposable joints and everything like that. I loved this Spider-Man. It was the coolest thing I'd ever seen. Played with that for, like, probably my whole childhood. Um, I had a... We haven't said this kind of toy, really. I had a teddy bear um, that I called Henry. Mm -hmm. And it was just my favorite uh, teddy bear up until I was, like, I don't know, nine years old, eight years old. Um, I still have it. Um, it's in my, uh, it's in my, my toy chest waiting for any possible kids in the future because it's just a really well-made teddy bear yeah uh i the story of that is i, I had to i had to go to a, a reading thing at school and you're supposed to wear pajamas and bring your teddy bear and i was like oh so i didn't really have a teddy bear that i slept with at that point but i was like oh, you got to bring a bear. i was a very rules kind of kid i was like we got to bring a teddy bear so i i grabbed this one that my aunt had given me and i brought it up and they said what's its name and i was like you know elefino <laughs> right and so I just, I just said uh Henry and they were like great and they Henry? put it on it that was like as a kid just for some reason I thought that was the name went with that so still got Henry and uh and last but certainly not least I want to bring up that I had a full range of uh, gargoyles mm. oh, I mean, oh you're gargoyles. a gargoyle kid huh? I had all those uh my favorite one being Bronx uh, the little dog like um, gargoyle because he had a little fl a little button. If you pulled his back leg, his mouth would open, so he like uh, so he could like bite things. It was great. I loved I loved those gargoyles. That's neat. All right, so now that we've uh, kind of like reawakened our childhood selves and uh, rem reminisced on all our favorite toys and whatnot, yeah. Uh, were there any other favorite parts of the movie that didn't didn't hit your criteria for favorite, but you just really wanted to talk about? You you wanted to talk it out some kind of um, conflict scene or whatever before we talk about what I'm sure will be the shortest part. Uh, what did you not like? <laughs> so I was really impressed with the beginning of the movie. Like, the beginning of the movie's great. It all, I mean, the whole movie's great. But what I caught this time that I had never really registered is that Andy... This is 1995. So, like, I feel like this is pretty progressive for the time. Andy is willingly playing with a Bo Peep doll. Right. Like, I feel like if we look back at our time as children... We didn't have a lot of what would be considered girl toys. No. no. And Andy's little sister was like little baby at the time. So like, I don't feel like that. I mean, I feel like that could have been her toy, but he was still like willingly taking it and playing with it. And, and I thought that was like good on Pixar for making that a thing mm -hmm. in 1995 with this little kid to show that it's okay to play with a variety of toys. And I really liked that watching it this time. Yeah, there were no Barbies in my house. It was uh, the closest I had to girl toys were I had a Pink Ranger, and I had uh, Doctor Beverly Crusher, from Star <laughs> Trek action figure. Yeah. Uh, I had the full crew, so she came. She you know that was a part of that whole collection. But those are the closest to like girl toys I really had. I had Beanie Babies. Does that count? <laughs> no, everybody had, had Beanie, Beanie Babies. Babies. But you know you're right. And um, if there's a specific thing for me, like uh, that also just stands out, is just the the opening that opening sequence with Andy playing with his toys. It just totally puts you in the mood. Every I think almost every person played with their toys in some fashion similar to that. Maybe not quite as artistic as Andy is. He was Andy's, very creative. Andy's got like whole cardboard boxes that he's taken and painted and drawn on. I, I didn't never. I was never quite that creative. I just kind of used what I had around me as my setting um, and. You know, imagine the rest, but I feel like everybody remembers. It captures the idea of imagination 
early on and setting you in how he sees them. And it's kind of funny how the toys, for the most part, sort of reflect his interpretations of them, for the most part. Like, you know, Woody views himself as the leader of the group. And, uh, you know, he, he presents... Uh, Potato Head is being kind of a bad guy, and Potato Head's not really a bad guy, but he's not necessarily the most uh, he's just a smart ass. He's yeah, he's just kind of like he's a, a bit of he's a, kind of a jerk, but he's kind of like a lovable jerk. Is he lovable? He's a grumpy old man. He's, he's a, a grumpy a, old man. That's the best he's thing. a bit of a neutral or a lawful evil kind of character. Yeah. Um, what bothers me about um, Potato Head is that he kind of he like has an extremist. Um, behavior a little bit more extreme than Woody mm. but it's similar yeah. like Woody overreacts to Buzz's arrival and bu- uh, Potato Head overreacts to everything Woody does Yeah, and it's weird it's strange to me that all the toys are like Woody what the hell but with Potato Head it's like oh yeah Potato Head's right yeah Potato's like, well, <laughs> just because he takes it to the extreme right like, well, Potato Head is a crazy psychopath there seems you do not to- know what where we live yeah, right now? Yeah, I know what the times are. <laughs> but well, The more we, extreme you are, the more right you are. I guess we can kind of get into stuff. I don't know if there's necessarily stuff we didn't like. It's just kind of analyzing the characters. But, yeah, yeah, but yeah. Potato Head definitely... I always got the impression... I mean, I mean, not always, but I got the impression at a certain point when I would watch these films as a kid that Potato Head was Andy's favorite at one point. You think? Yeah, because Potato Head makes a very, make a, makes a very poignant statement or a very, 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 uh, a very uh, uh, calculated statement of saying Woody's been Andy's favorite since kindergarten, right? And he always talks about Woody in such a way that he doesn't really buy into Woody's authority, right? He's always questioning Woody. He's always talking about how people, like, he makes fun of Slinky for being so devoted to Woody with the butt-kissing moment, which is something I didn't really get as a kid. He takes his lips off and pushes him against his his potato his posterior. And, uh, and so, like, that's just kind of my headcanon, if you will, that at one point, Potato Head was Andy's favorite, but then Woody came along... And Woody became Andy's favorite. And he's just kind of had to learn to live with it. And he's just kind of like always somewhat semi-negative to things that Woody says. He's never never, never to the point of like outwardly contradicting him. But sometimes just being like, man, eh, what do you know, Woody? That kind of stuff. And it might be the same situation of like if Buzz had stayed Andy's favorite and there hadn't been this thing, this kind of like dual favorites that they ended up with, Woody might have been that way. He might have been like, yeah, Buzz is the leader of the room and I used to be Andy's favorite. And he talks about himself like he used to be cool. But, uh, but that's probably one of those aspects that they kind of get into. That's the life of a toy is sometimes you're in, you're, sometimes you're the toy's favorite or sometimes you're the owner's favorite and yeah. then sometimes you fall away because the kid gets older and their, their sensibilities change. I like that theory and it would also, uh, you know, um, support the idea of Potato Head not really respecting Woody too much because he knows that his time in the in the in the limelight is limited. Mm-hmm. I think that one thing that goes under recognized in in a sense is how much of a jerk Woody is. Like Woody's not a good guy in this movie, but everybody loves Woody, and mm-hmm. I think that is a conscious thing that they went through because on the special features they go through how the initial movie Woody was just an overbearing obvious jerk and they watched it and they were like he is not likable no. like he is he is mean and surly oh, yeah. and just terrible so like they flipped it to where it's like you know he's making the bad decisions but because he's such a a nice guy it's more of a what he don't do that kind of a thing than like oh screw that guy mm-hmm. and i think that's a really smart storytelling element and you can you get that because so many people love Woody, but you watch this and you just really see how selfish and how hypocritical he is. Yeah. Because I I wrote down some quotes going into this movie, knowing that I kind of wanted to talk about it. And one of the quotes that he says at the very beginner is, "What matters is that we are here for Andy when he needs us." And then that's the what he's kind of putting out to all the other toys. It's like, we have to be here for Andy no matter what, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. And then he goes on his downfall slide of pushing, trying to push Buzz behind the shelf and just his general disdain yes. for where he has been replaced. And yeah. I just think that's a really dy- interesting dynamic that they have throughout this whole movie. Yeah, they. he's a guy who's always been on top as far as, I guess, he's concerned. Like, of course, it's, yeah, you know, like, he's kind of, like, always been the star. 
And like he seems to respond well to that role. Mm-hmm. Take you know people people trust him. He's, he's a good to, leader. He's yeah. he's for yeah. the party able to calm the storm. He had he has a little bit of a big head, but he's never had anybody to put him in check, right? And so he's finally confronted with with a situation that he never thought would happen. Him being replaced, you know, if all the other toys get replaced, it's no big deal for for Woody. He can try. He can tell him, hey guys, it's not that big a deal. You'll be all right. But he's never had to sit deal with it. And he's confronted with it, and he's totally un- unprepared for the feelings that come along with that. Yeah. Yeah, you know, when a person... We, we've all seen what happens when a person in power has that power threatened. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't go well for most people. No. And he's... Yeah, Woody's a victim of, of his own power. His own ego. Also, Buzz is an idiot in the beginning. And oh, that's man. That's gotta be extra frustrating for him it is it makes me like not only are you threatening my power as andy's favorite but you are an actual stupid idiot (laughs) well you're not even like aware of what you're doing you don't even know what you're doing you can't even have a conversation with me for me to be able to say look i'm the top toy around here you need to take a go low profile get lost a couple times all right or something like that but like buzz isn't even capable of having that conversation he's like uh whatever you say sheriff i'm (laughs) off to go fix my shit (laughs) so here's my question that i brought up it's never established, but in this world of Toy Story, where toys come to life, mm-hmm. what's the lore behind it? Like, do all toys know their toys? Because every single one of those toys know their toys. Mm-hmm. Or do they come to know it over time? That's something that is interestingly, I find a fascinating question. Because if, let's say, let's use Woody. Let's say that he didn't know he was a toy. Right, and mm-hmm. he went through the same phase as Buzz. Wouldn't you think that he would be a little like, understanding of that yeah. and remember this and understand how to do that, or did he never have to go through that? Thus, Buzz Lightyear is different than every other toy. Yeah, Andy, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> he is an Andy. He is an Andy. Yeah, we sure. have our own Andy. Um, and I bring that. It's, sorry to interrupt, but I had more that continues on that because whenever there, whenever Woody is rallying Sid's toys he says he's going through the plan of how they're going to save Buzz from the rocket and he says we're going to have to break a few rules to me that implies that they know that they're supposed to wake up and fall asleep and that they're not supposed to show that they're alive but him saying we're going to have to break a few rules because they show that they're alive to Sid to scare him that implies that they also have rules somehow that they are supposed to follow. That they innately know. Right. Because Sid's toys haven't lived with Andy. It's not like Andy, these are Woody's rules. Exactly. These are these universal are like, rules that all these toys have followed, even the ones that are are deformed and, and tortured like that. So what is the difference? Mm-hmm. Where is... Where is, is... Who is different? Is Is it a... We're all new and don't know and have to learn. Or Buzz is genuinely different than every other toy. He's programmed where he's made in. He's made in Taiwan. <laughs> so I, I, I think it's because he's a new toy, and that a lot of that is just the answer to me is implied in Toy Story Two. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They do when they go, go to the toy it. store and all of the toys there don't realize they're toys. Seemingly, yeah. I mean Barbie. Is it there being a tour guide? Yeah. <laughs> They're all having a Barbie. Well, she definitely yeah, a Barbie she, beach party, a Barbie she, pool party. She uh, definitely ascribes to the character that's been yeah. put on. All her. the Buzz Lightyears think that they're really Buzz Lightyear. So yeah. I think it's a new Zerg toy. Thing. Zerg. Uh, you don't really have an opinion, <laughs> but then you would think that like Woody and the other toys would 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 know the the protocol for ingratiating Buzz into becoming a, into like understanding his actual role. You, you would know? think. You would think. You think like. But they, but they just go along with it. Like Unless Potato just, Head and Ham, they just go along with it. Like, oh, yeah, you're a Space Ranger, dude. <laughs> uh, one of the things I wanted to touch base on was the theme of this. At least the theme that I found was identity. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. what exactly is your role? And, uh, and I think, if anything, I think if this movie is about anything, it's about growing. Mm-hmm. And it's about knowing who you... I mean, growing and knowing who you are because... We, when when Buzz finds out that he's actually just a toy and not a space ranger, he's actually very depressed. Oh, yeah. Real just, identity crisis. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's a real identity crisis, and it, it just drains him out of it. And then, you know, Woody's kind of there. Woody's there, and he's telling him, you know, you're you're actually 
you're actually here to entertain somebody whenever they're down. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I never thought, you know, I never thought of it that way until I'm, until obviously when I grew up and I was an adult and I'm like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. But really the theme, I, the theme that they tackle here with is just identity and it's goes along with what you guys are saying, like, because whenever, whenever you're new, you know, you're just, you're doing whatever you think you're doing. And then all of a sudden you find out exactly what it is that you're supposed to be doing, which, you know, could be anything, could be whatever it is, could be whatever it is you're assigned to. So, uh, in this case, Buzz Lightyear and Woody, last name, um, (laughs) I don't think Woody has a last. He doesn't. Um, Woody Roundup. Yeah, Woody Roundup. Um, <laughs> Technically, it's Sheriff Woody. If you want to get really technical, yeah, Sheriff sure. Woody. All right, so. Sheriff Woody. They they eventually find out. They eventually find out that they are toys entertaining a kid. Mm-hmm. You know, and but my thing is, all of the other toys know that. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe they had to. Maybe, maybe they had to find out too. But that's what I'm asking. That's maybe it's the like question. Or- it, probably an origin story waiting in the happening. Yeah. It, Pixar, it please. I mean, <sighs> like, like, like... Do they just all forget David, over you time? Brought up, right. You brought up the quote from Potato and Ham, or was it Potato and Rex, where they know what toy company they come from. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, like, Rex even away. knows the backstory of his toy uh, company. Yeah, he goes, that, I'm not actually Mattel. I was a smaller company that was purchased by Mattel in a buyout. Yeah, exactly. And it's like a whole thing. Like, how does he know? Right. Yeah. There's some well, of them are more learn. conscious. I think they learn over time. I wonder if it's because Buzz is so based on a character. Like, like... Like Rex is a generic dinosaur. So Mr. Potato Head is. Just, to learn. Well, Woody's yeah, and, and that's the thing. But Woody's like, been a toy for years. Woody's also been saying to Ben, maybe he's forgotten his own origin. Maybe he's well, forgotten he, he did. Elements. He did. You know, maybe he's like a forty-five-year-old toy, and he's forgotten like you know the basics of his. Andrew uh, knows all about for forgetting once you get up there in the Andy forty-five years. Andrew was alive for Sputnik. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is a better conversation for Toy Story Two, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. we'll get into that later. Uh, well, you and I are gonna have fun. For Why, Toy Story because of, of Jesse, I'm ready. <laughs> do you have any other? Do, are there any other Toy Story theories to talk about before we get into? I don't really, have, th- I don't really have any theories. Mm. Do I know? have one more questionable part. Okay. At the very end, when that rocket is strapped to Buzz, right, and they are flying in the air, mm-hmm. and through all this drama and all this chaos, at the very end, all he does was open his wings, rip that tape, and is safe. He couldn't have done that earlier? I know. It was, he was like, <laughs> that's the, this throughout this whole thing, that's the only question that I've been like, why didn't, if you, how'd you know that was going to work? And why didn't you do it earlier? Whenever mm-hmm. And you could have avoided all of this. He just thought, because there's the moment specifically where he gets stuck in the fence with it. Yeah. And if he had just done it then, then it's not, oh, I'm okay, I'm unstuck. Let's get out of here. That's the only. But they ended up needing the rocket. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know that this, through, through the story, it was neat and it, it, it was needed, but like, you could have done that earlier, Buzz, and then we could have just got on the thing and made it a lot easier. Mm-hmm. The only thing I'll say, if, if this is a hot take at anything, uh, there's two things. Uh, one is when Woody throws anything, he has incredible range and very good accuracy. Yeah, he throws those lights across. The- yeah, he throws those lights across, and I'm like, you know, to uh, if, if I was a toy, I'd perceive those as heavy, but he throws them very far. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I couldn't throw him that far if I wanted to. But, uh, and hit a window, yeah. Yeah, and hit a window. But uh, also, one of the things that was I felt kind of bad about the remote control car. Because... Oh, RC. Yeah. So, say what? RC. Yeah, yeah RC. Like, uh, like, they're driving him, and they're trying to catch up, and the battery runs out. You hear him drop the, drop the remote control, and then he gets rescued... I mean, he gets rescued whenever the remote control ends up in the back of the truck. Oh, yeah. But he doesn't have a remote control anymore, so he's kind of useless to Andy. That's why you never see him again in any of these movies. Mm-hmm. Is he in two or three? I can't he's remember now. He's not three. Yeah, I don't remember. I feel sorry for RC. Also, if you don't, if if you pay attention in the very beginning, all the children at Andy's birthday party, they're all the same. Oh yeah, they yeah, are. They all they're, look they're like all the Andy. same. Yeah, yeah, they they decided not to model the, eight different kids' faces. Yeah, because they, they didn't have yeah they didn't have time the to make individual avatars. That's the I get limitation. That. Listen, Josh and I talked about this. Uh, for 1995, this, these graphics are still amazing. Yeah. I think for the most part, I think what it's on. It, Scud yeah. is like the only one that was like eh, yeah a little better, but like overall, these graphics are fantastic. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about it next week. But just the 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 amount of improvement they made in four years. 
from not, from from Toy Story One to Toy Story Two is impressive. Um, just the, the the upgrade in uh, visual clarity and 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 the, the polish on all these characters, but it's 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 groundbreaking material. Like Andrew, uh, Andrew's one word. Mm-hmm. Um, it, I, I I listened to an interview with John Lasseter earlier, and he said that you know films are twenty four frames uh, a second, and so they had to do a lot of shots. Every they had to animate every frame for the shot. Well. Every frame took four to nine hours to render yeah. back then. So the work on this film took a long time, and it took a long time to get every single thing right. And you're not even thinking about, oh, whoops, we didn't match this frame right. we got to do it again. Yeah. You know, uh, working in an actual 3D space versus a 2D space and being able to put the camera essentially wherever they wanted allowed them a lot of freedom and changed uh, the whole dynamic of how this uh, this art form would work and uh it it is just truly amazing when you look at what does work about it i mean like you said it still holds up in terms of uh, in terms of its appearance and i think it's because they didn't they didn't try to do like realistic faces they stuck with these toy faces that can be exaggerated and can be uh odd looking you know woody can have a super pointed nose and buzz can have a chin that's not actually a chin you know it's uh uh it's the perfect situation. They, they 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 did everything right in terms of the first computer generated film. Yeah, I will say to back that up. Uh, oh, thank God! <laughs> <laughs> is a uh, the sound. Mm-hmm. I think like because you're creating a digital world where you have nothing mm-hmm. to base it on, so you really just have to create everything in an entire world here. And I th- and I love how that. I love how that all of that is created, because I, I, that's that's one of my, that's one of the things I look for uh, in movies anymore. Is just you know how, how the sound plays out. Good is the sound editing. Good, good sound design. Yeah, yeah, sound design, and the sound design of this is excellent. Yeah, not to mention the music. Not to mention the music. Not to mention the music. <laughs> not to mention the music. I right. want to mention the music. Let's talk about box office history. Oh, you want to get right into it? Yep. Oh, we can do that. Yep, yep, yep. We're hitting that oh, time of show. Look. All right. Toy Story debuted the weekend of November 24th, way back in 1995. It finished number one with a three-day total of $29 million. It would stay number one uh, for, I think, four straight weeks, dip to number two, and then jump right back to number one during that Christmas weekend. Also out uh, that weekend... Of November twenty fourth, nineteen ninety five, Goldeneye. Uh, you guys love this film. This is a classic. So many sequels. Go back, check it out. It is Ace Ventura when nature calls. Woo! At number four, Money Train. Ooh, that sucked. At number five, Casino. All right. At number six, American President. All right. At number seven, It Takes Two. Right. Anybody know It Takes Two? It, it takes two to make yeah. a bingo, right? It takes two. Mary Kate, Nashley, Mary Kate, Olson. Nashley, and Christy, Christy Alley. And then uh, I believe this is a Tarantino film, Get Shorty. No, it's a Baron, Baron Son- Barry Sonnenfeld film. Oh, okay. But yeah, no, it's a great film. Nick of Time and then Home for the Holidays. Sweet. Wrap out the number 10 that week. So no true sequels in the box office that weekend. Um, well, GoldenEye's in there, time. which is another movie in the Bond uh, franchise. Um, in total, Toy Story would finish with $191 million in its domestic haul. Good you haul. add that with $181 million from overseas, that's a worldwide total of $373.5 million. It was the highest grossing film of 1995. Anybody want to take a shot at number two? 1995, Batman yeah. Forever. Uh, Apollo 13. I got nothing. Josh, you said Batman Forever. I correct? did. With 187. Maybe it was. Yeah. Oh, shoot. Uh oh. My screen it, went away. Hang on. I think he lost it. it. I think it was. 1995. Yeah, I think Josh is going to be right on the head. Hit it right on the head. It is Batman Forever. Sorry. Nailed that it. took me a sec. Uh, another, other movies that came out that year include Apollo, Apollo 13, yeah. Pocahontas, GoldenEye, Jumanji, uh, oh. Die Hard of the Vengeance, Seven, Casper. A lot of great films. Um. Wrapping up the the box office stats here, it is uh, it is the sixteenth highest grossing Pixar film, soon to be seventeenth. Let's face it, it is uh, Tom Hanks' seventh highest grossing film of all time. It is the third highest grossing film for Tim Allen, and uh, oh, uh, we'll talk about this too next week a little bit with Toy Story two. But they did a re release of these in two thousand nine, 
uh, where they re-released Toy Story and Toy Story 2 in 3D, and uh, that 3D re-release went on to make $30 million. Dang. So that is it for the box office. I, I, think, it would, I think it would do well in 3D. Well, it did. If they, if, they, if they would do it again. I, yeah. Just another quick little note I, I looked up that I was going to mention, and this seems as good a time as any. Um, it's hard to ignore the star power of Tom Hanks and Tim Allen at the time this came out. Mm-hmm. Tom Hanks is fresh off of his Oscar win for Forrest Gump. Mm-hmm. Apollo 13 is out. Um, Tim Allen is on Home Improvement, which is in the, the top ten shows on television right now. Mm-hmm. So these two people... Are the Santa Claus massive come out? stars. Had the Santa Claus come out at that point in time? No. I don't think, I don't think it had year. yet. Okay. But it was about to if it hadn't. I think it was like 1996. But with, I think I think what I saw was that this that season of television, 95-96, Home Improvement, was the seventh most watched show on TV. And back then, the seventh most watched show on TV was a ton of people. Yeah. yeah. Millions and millions of people more than what it would be more today. like an eight? <laughs> what? Like an eight? Like eight million? Yeah. Probably more than that. Yeah. I couldn't find the exact numbers, but it's a lot of people. A lot of people used to watch TV. <laughs> so, Toy Story, Rotten Tomatoes, throw out your guesses. 96. 96. I think it's also high. I'm going to say 92. Okay. I'm going to go Probably straight gonna be up 100. Okay. Oh. And the critics' consensus, entertaining as it is innovative, Toy Story reinvigorated animation while heralding the arrival of Pixar as a family-friendly force to be reckoned with. I'm going to stay the same. I'm going to join the entire of this mess. It's a very modern uh, yeah, it's way a, of, of looking at it. Um, I'll stay 92. It probably 95 or something like okay. that. I'll stay 92. The Rotten Tomatoes score. Oh, uh, I'll go with 99. Okay. And you're switching down one number. The correct score for Toy Story 1 is... 100%. Oh, oh shouldn't it perfect. You still got it right. A perfect score. Perfect score. Wow. That um, surprises me. Yeah. Really? I knew it I just be- don't see a lot of 100% and so like, you I don't. mean, I'm not upset about it. It's just a surprise. The thing is, yeah, you'd have to assume that somebody's given it a bad review at some yeah. point. So like, while something had to drag it down from 100, there's just so few 100s on the total Rotten Tomatoes mm. score list, aren't there? Mm. How many 100s are there? There's, I mean, there's a, there's several. I mean, uh, there's some. Oh, I know the Shawshank Redemption's one. That's baffling. Anyway, I mean, I mean that's so. Congratulations, I mean, Andrew. You run the game next week. You do. Oh, oh my God damn. Hot damn. Hot damn. You can't what was the audience score? score? Also, the audience score was a ninety-two. What wow. The hey. There you go. Man, what are you talking about? You're wrong. Oh, never Shawshank mind. is ninety-one. Never Toy mind. Story is way better. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so that wraps up. Um that game. So Andrew will be running the Rotten Tomatoes game for Toy Story 2, which we'll be talking about next week. How would everyone here rate Toy Story on a scale of um... Monkeys? What? Monkeys? Monkeys! Like little nah, barrel monkeys. Of monkeys. In, the barrel of monkeys isn't in this movie. Yeah, it is. They in, tried it. They, yeah, they, yeah, the yeah, barrel of monkeys isn't yeah, working! Kind. All We're right. going to try yeah, another right. plan! How many barrels of monkeys okay. will you give Toy Story? I mean, it's five for me. Yeah, five. Yeah, five. Five out of five. Six. Okay, well, that wasn't All an right. option, well, so you not... zeroed out to zero, and it was <laughs> zero. Let the record show he hated it. Cool. <laughs> cool. So we'll be back next week with Toy Story 2. Find us online at facebook.com slash so many sequels pod and on Instagram and Twitter. You can listen to us on the free Soundstooth app available now on your iTunes store, Apple store, and uh, Android store. And then we're also on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, SoundCloud, all that fun stuff. Find us online. Leave us a review. Let us know what you thought of Toy Story. And until next time. We hear it so many sequels. See everything. So play.